Hello, welcome back to the space. My name is Rosalyn Reed, and I'm your host. And I'm here with again Trevor Francois. Welcome back, Trevor. Well, perfect. Hello. So it's time to wake up. It's if you haven't woken up already, this is the opportunity to you awake on another level. So um, many of you know about this topic, but we thought we'd go a little bit deeper than we have done before. Um, we did do our first show talking about the brain. And um, we wanted to continue that subject um, around the mind and the brain. So uh, this uh, episode is about, what is our subject? The subconscious and the conscious mind. Yes, so we're going to discuss about the conscious and subconscious mind. So maybe some of you um, don't kind of really understand what the difference between the two is. So your conscious mind is the things that you're aware of. And a subconscious mind is aspects of your brain that you are not aware of. So things that are within you, but they're not things you constantly get thoughts about without doing some sort of technique to awaken them. So one of the things that many people use um, is meditation. So where should we start, Trevor? It's it's quite it's quite a it's it's a quite a big kind of subject in, in relation to it because conscious and subconscious we have to assume that one is conscious is what's present what's now what you're mm-hmm. aware of the subconscious is all the kind of behaviour type things that manifest when you're doing something that you're not really aware of you just see, just they they occur every day but that's the kind of that, that thing that undercut, underpins all your attitudes, all your behaviours. And, and so that's what it's like what you call, it's your display, your public display is controlled by your unconscious. So your behaviour, all your behaviour is unconscious. Okay, so let's take it back a step for our viewers out there. Okay. So let's take it step a, back a step. So no problem. we got a brain. Yeah. It sits somewhere. Usually it sits inside your head. Usually. Mm. Sometimes we have to question some people where their brain might be at in some instances. And then we have the mind. So the brain is... What the mind does. Okay, so the brain is an organ. Yeah. And then what's the mind? The mind is... Oh, it's really it's a difficult thing to quantify, to actually say physically what it is. But it, it is... Oh, for the want of a bit of... Really difficult. It's really difficult to come to. It's like it's a, if you, you for want of a better word, it's like the spiritual entity of your of of your being. That's that's the mind. That's the controlling. That's the element of 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 your mind. It's kind of the spiritual aspect of your being. Okay, so because I was reading, been reading a lot, and um, and they were saying that you know the the, the mind is actually larger than the brain. Yeah. And it's quite elusive. Yeah. And it's 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 the activities of your brain. Yes. So uh, that's that's right. It's, it's activities. Your mind shows up in the activities that you do. That the brain does. That directs what the brain does. So your mind shows up there. But in in a sense, it's it's something you can't actually put your finger put on. Put your finger on <laughs> it. No. So when we're talking about the conscious and subconscious, yes. we're we're particularly talking about. The mind, mind, not the brain. Not the, so brain, the brain, yeah. As an organ. Yeah. So we're talking about the activities or the things what happen. Mm. Um, these two different, these, these two different a- aspects of the mind. Yeah. So in terms of the conscious, so how would you give an example of a, of your of a conscious, your consciousness? What? Being yeah. conscious. Being conscious, being being aware of what's in front of you right now, being present. And I know that sounds really quite simplistic. But are actually being there with it and not thinking about something else. Okay, so that's being <laughs> but conscious is also being aware is of it is is what you think. Yeah. Conscious yeah. is what you do. Yeah. You said, well, I'm get up on conscious, but consciously aware of something which I need to go and yeah. do. So that initiates you to, to your conscious mind initiates you to take action. To take right action. There, yeah, that's day. right. Yeah, and it's it's the, it's, the, it's the thing. That you use you use that the most to to get about doing your everyday things that you're doing. That's the thing that kind of motivates you. But the 
Do you want me to elaborate or? Well, I, I think it's a big added because because we do want to we want to focus on the subconscious. Yeah. So the subconscious, what is what is the issues or the concerns um, people may be not aware of aware of about the subconscious? What, what is it? So what how does it impact on a person's life? Well, it's it, 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 it here's the thing. You your subconscious, like as as, as I mentioned before underpins all your behaviours, all of the things that have been hardwired from birth, right, right right through to the present time, that your subconscious is kind of, uh, has an, has kind of locked in all the, all your, beha- your behaviour patterns mm-hmm. and how you are, how you think, what, f- what food you eat, when you're going to get ill, if you can take the sun, your subconscious has all that. And, and, and under under its control. So you so you know so so you with unknowingly you are being you see, you have free you have free choice. You have free choice. But your choice is already locked in to your subconscious. So whatever you believe to be your free choice actually is already it's been predetermined in relation to your to your behaviours that, that were locked in at an earlier stage. Picking up on that, I went to a um boot camp with mm. um, a really great guy called Jerry Roberts mm. and um, he gave this analogy of um, a captain and, sh- and the ship a captain and a crew not ship ship T mm-hmm. e. and um, um, one of the um, uh, examples or diagrams he gave is yeah. of a, a circle with a circle in the centre and then if that circle is cut in half it's like the bottom half is your subconscious mm-hmm. and and then within the um subconscious what happens when you're a child young maybe under five under seven under eight maybe up to that age is uh, the authority figures in your life mm-hmm. that's right influence you yeah. so they drop some seeds inside as we get older that half a circle becomes a full circle so that's when our conscious mind we become aware yeah. of who we are yeah. But those then elements are locked in, yeah. positive and negative, whatever they are, there they become locked. Yeah. And so, um, what it made me quite aware of was the fact of when I'm doing something, is it something that I have decided, or that really is already in my subconscious mind, and I'm just acting out things I've been told. So, yeah. for instance, yeah. if you if you're told. And this is an example that was given, and you're told that you're no good, you'll never amount to nothing, you're a failure, um, you'll never do nothing. It, it, that gets locked in. What happens is after that, as you grow into adult, you could be, you could still be acting on those beliefs. Yes, that's that right. Someone else has put in. Well, that's that's right. That's right. And and yeah, and whilst we all like to believe that we have free choice, actually we're we're governed. By those sub sub those locked in subconscious behaviours, so we're locked in we're locked into them, irrespective of unless unless like you said unless we do work on it to un, to, to find out exactly what they are when we're not going to know what they really are because they you've always thought like that because you can't remember a time when you didn't think like that. But the, but the thing is, is you said that we don't know where they what they what they really are, but is that really true as if you're, if you're like someone might say you're acting out of character, or that you're behaving in a certain way, and you're not comfortable with it, but you think it's you, you think that's who you are. Yeah, because you've not, you've not had, you've not, you've not known anything different. You've not known and experienced anything different. So for you, this is who you are. You've not had any other ex- experience and other evidence to show. To, or, or kind of like um, witness any any other be- behaviours or people's attitudes towards you that shown you anything different that you've been so you for you this is this is who you are what you display is who you are and that's what you believe is who you are. So if if that's the if that's the case, then why is it you know we were talking before mm-hmm. and we've talked about there's so many um, motivational speakers, futurists. Um, psychologists, spiritualists talking about the subconscious um, and alerting people and making people aware that people are deciding to 
actually look at that and start to make changes. So what is happening then? What is happening that all of a sudden there's more and more people who are becoming aware of something's not quite right? Well, the, 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 the thing is, right, okay, due to the, the locked-in nature of your, your, your subconscious behaviours, you're, 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 you, you are prone to being manipulated. You can go, you're, you're, you're kind of, a pre, you've been put into like pre-programmed sets of behaviours, social behaviours, etc. have been pre-programmed. So they can be, they can be manipulated externally. So, so yeah. things that you've always thought that were locked in at, at a lower level are things that you were, were told by authority figures, your parents, etc., etc. Ideals that they had enforced on them by somebody. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? So, so, so you... Uh, can be so, so because that's in your subconscious. That even though you may be thinking a particular way, you're acting. You act out these things, these behaviours. So they can you, you're quite easily manipulated by diff, different mediums in in relation to that. That's all. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that mm -hmm. point. But my my question to you is that how comes at this point in time in history or this point in time in my life? People are coming aware that something's wrong and they want to change it. Why are people becoming aware that there's a subconscious aspect of themselves and they're looking for, you know, there's so many people online searching and looking and there's lots of talks online. Um, you go to boot clubs, there's motivational speakers, there's books being written about the subconscious. Mind. How comes all of a sudden people are becoming more aware there's something not right? And, I, I, and that thing is just beyond what I can physically touch, feel, experience. There's something else going on, and I want to tap into that. Why are people starting to tap into that? Why do you think people are tapping into well, that? It, for me, people want it better to understand themselves because they, 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 they believe that actually, you know, I, I have the, I, ha, I am these behaviours so thus far. But you always have a kind of idea. Sometimes you, those of us who have time enough to sit down, actually, there's something that I'm that I'm missing a piece somewhere there's something missing and I can't quite tell you what it is I can't put my finger on it but there is something missing from this picture and if talking to any, any other people a lot of people because it's it, it, it's not kind of something they, they're not, not detrimental about it but that people don't actually have time to stop and think about mm. things but it's like you have time to stop and think that there's something really miss, missing from this is this all there is is this all there is to life? Going about doing this, going to work, and and, and earning money, and like a nice car and house, and you're thinking, but is that is then what's the what is the point of that? Just that existence. Nothing wrong with that existence, but it's in and of itself. Is that all we strive for? Like, are we just more than that? So, is it? Do you feel that you know, from what I've experienced in my life, you know, I haven't really said to the viewers that I'm a serial people watcher, that's my hobby, mm. and I like to watch the you know behaviours of people and how people interact, and then, and then those people who are struggling, I like to help them um, develop their true self in whatever way, you know, usually through coaching. So um, what I've kind of gathered mm. through my many years of doing this is that some of the people that I've come across, the reason they've got to mm -hmm. point is either some sort of spiritual awakening, yeah. or they, so they, you know, they, they, they've become aware of there's something else going yeah, on yeah. there. Or the other thing is that they're just not happy. Mm -hmm. um, and and, that, and that's I think, and then that's the thing that that that's, that, that that's almost like a shift because that's the thing about not being happy. They were told that all these things, having all these things, would make them happy, and they're still not happy. So why am I still not happy if I have all these things and I'm still not happy? What is that? I've been told so many t t from from day one to now that if I do all these things, right, I will become happy. And that's and so so it's kind of externalizing your happiness, the search for external happiness. Mm. And you'll never and whereas what what the subconscious is is is, is, is showing you that actually your you you are responsible for your happiness and there's no external anything can make you happy. So what needs to happen 
It's your behaviours you need to change to be happy in here. That's what needs to be happy. The things, the, the, the car, the house, the, they are external manifestations of what? <laughs> it's kind of, it come, it, they're, they're ephemeral. They're not, they're not real, real in a sense. The thing, the thing, things that are real, is what is what, the only things that are real about it is that your experience of them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. But the, the things in of themselves, what do they actually mean? We give them the value. Mm. We give them the value in and of themselves. They are nothing without the value that we give to them. So we can just as easily say, actually, it's not really that important. It's not really that important. Yeah, it's nice to have have a roof over your head. It's nice to put food in your belly, but. Apart from that, and how many houses can you buy? How many cars can you have? So, you know what I'm saying? So, so, it, so, so you kind of get to a point and you have all this and then you're still not happy. You're thinking, well, why am I not happy? There's got to be more to it than just having this thing. Because it, this is, this thing, it seems pointless. Mm. It just seems really pointless. And, and, and so, so people are, are looking to, to search out things like meditation and stuff like that to find out what it is. Because there's got to be something to it. This, the, the meditation element mm -hmm. to actually say well, okay I'm, I'm willing to open I'm willing to open my mind to find something to, to find my ha the happiness so to find something because this is not working for me anymore so don't always you know we say that you know going into the subconscious mind which we'll go into mm. a bit more detail about the kind of things you can do mm. to tap to tap in or come on mm -hmm. to to become more aware of what's in your subconscious yeah. and how it plays out and yeah. how it can play out yeah. but i think also i want the viewers to kind of really get a grasp with that yes for some people it's um they're unhappy and mm. in, and they have all the material mm. and so for them they're tapping into the subconscious is to bring out another level of mm. um, a, a different type of experience for them yeah. to really to work out what is it that is causing them to feel this sense of uh, happiness. Uh, uh, but for others, it is about gaining things. Yeah. It's about having goals and achieving them. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. having the car, um, having the house, having the partner. It, 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 but I think either way, it's the same thing. It's like something in your life is blocking you mm. from achieving that. Yeah, whether yeah. it's happiness, whether it's material, yeah. whether it's health, whether it's um a, a, a spiritual connection. That's right. Um, whether it's emotion, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you haven't been emotionally detached. Something has caused that. Mm. And as much as you might sit down and want to think, mm. no. that's not going to be enough. No. To, 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 to go deeper into what it is, you know, to find that deeply in your life, right, what right. it is, what is stopping you from being able to achieve these goals, yeah. whatever these goals are. Yeah. And I think goals, are, goals in, in and of themselves are necessary. You are, it's not necessary. In terms of, in terms of aspirational elements that, that drive you, goals are necessary. The goal itself is not necessary. The goals, that something to aim at, something to give your life purpose, purpose mm. to your life, they are necessary in terms of develop, de developing your character and bringing out the, the greater qualities that everybody, inherent in everyone. Mm. And that's only possible if you have goals that you strive to achieve. Well, they say, you know, the victory is in the process, isn't it? So it's Always. actually the process of going towards these yes. things. We learn something about yes. ourselves. Yeah. We enrich our life right, more yeah. through Absolutely. going through that process, seeing Absolutely. what it is that is causing us to behave, speak, think mm. in a certain mm. way, which is, you know, we're looking at things what are actually de detrimental to your well being. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so um, you know, touching so moving on from that. Mm. So we, we, those who are listening no, listen, because they, they agree at some sort of level that there is a subconscious aspect mm -hmm. of our being. There's a subconscious mm -hmm. aspect of our mind. So, you know, I know that. You've told me that. I'm aware of it. I'm still stuck. What, what do I do? How do, how, what do I do with this? What can I do? Well, it, 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 here's the thing. It's kind of the, the, the I don't know, it's the Tibetan word for meditation, right? In, in actual meditation, the Tibetan translation means to become familiar. With one, and you might say, "What what does that actually mean?" Well, to become familiar with with your subconscious behaviours, because they're all, they're, they are very, they are very subtle. Mm. They're very subtle. The things that you say, you say that this is 
this is what you normally do. But these are the things that the minute you start to strive for greater, right, like, okay, your subconscious self, set, set of behaviours is really telling you you can't do it. It's already programmed to say that you can't do it. So your behaving, your, be, your behaviour that you've always displayed, right, will take you in completely the opposite direction and cause you to fail in your striving aspiration of whatever asp aspiration that you had. Because you had that, you had to overcome that element, your subconscious kind of program, in order to, to get to it. But it's only when you have a goal to strive to, you, understand, you start to get to understand. And also observing the behaviours, you have to observe them. Because you don't notice because they're so subtle. Mm. And you have to do it over a period of time to notice it. So and, and also, <laughs> you know, not stopping you from no. interact, but it's just, um, I think, just so that those who are listening can understand is that the behaviours, the important thing to understand is that those behaviours um, are hindrance. Yes. They hinder you from, doing from, 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 it, from being or achieving or doing what you really want to do. Yeah. So we're talking about behaviours that well, don't give you the result you want. No. But you're so used to that result, you just think you that's, accept that, it. That, that's accepted. That's yeah. how far my life can go. Yeah. That's yeah. A, as far as I'm able, what I'm able to yeah. achieve. Yeah. That's, that's my limitation. Yeah. Where in the, sub in the subconscious, um, they're... It's limitless. Yeah. It's a, you know, in, in, in Buddhism, yeah. we call it, we call it, you know, your karma. Yeah. So your karma is, is neither nor totally negative or positive. It's not neither or. It it's is. just a, a, a collection of um, life or experiences of things that have gone. You, yeah. you, you've experienced the life, things that you accumulated a lifetime over a lifetime. And um, so it's that, it's the possibilities of what you can achieve in your life. That's right. Is, Limitless, yeah. endless. I'm and it's I'm not um, conditioned by any one circumstance. Mm. You know what I mean? Where you was born, who you are, your nationality, or no. anything. It's that that total belief that one you deserve it, and two that you can achieve it. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's where you. It's about, it's about making your subconscious work for you, because yeah. the programs in and of themselves are not the problem. It's the conditions. That are, that set the program up in the first place is the problem. Mm. The kid, the condition, the subconscious in itself is the thing that if you're doing something perfectly naturally in relation to aspiring for something and trying to strive to acquire, it can work for your benefit. But if you're aware of your subconscious negative tendencies, yeah, so we kind of reprogram your subconscious. So <laughs> on this point of reprogramming, um. I was sharing with you a book that I'm, I've been looking into. And it's called The Genie Within by um, Harry W. Um, Carter. And um, and he talks about that. He has a lesson in, in, in the book where he, he talks about, you know, being able to reprogram your subconscious. And it's actually a physical exercise where okay. you, you start to um, act out a role of where you're in control. And you, you, you totally um, go into a state of, I want a meditative state mm -hmm. where you start visualizing yourself. Um, and this particular um, exercise was like you're on a stage, and you, and you record this um, piece of text, and then you play the text back to yourself with your eyes closed, and you listen to the text, mm -hmm. and you actually visualize being in this on this stage. Um, um, doing this exercise with a director who's you, everything is you within mm -hmm. this thing, and believing that you can achieve this, and that through whatever you're doing, like reading this this book, the genie within that, you can you know you can grasp things within the book, and you can you can become yeah yeah a a, a greater person greater than, yeah. than what you, you are, are person. Person. Yeah. Yeah. you know, and we're not saying people are not great, but greater. Then you are. Yeah, I mean, it's that, so you can be great, you can be great, or you could be feel totally, you know what I mean, low, and, that, you, and you you take yourself up to another level. I think that's the thing. We that's that's what you, we need to aspire to. That actually, that's what we need to aim for. That uh, that I'm I'm greater than. 
It's like it's like it's like it's, it's the thing with the we talk about the thing with the iceberg. It's all, the most of the iceberg is under the, the stuff that you can't see. Yeah. It's, it's a subconscious. It's something your subconscious is huge. That shows how much potential you as an individual have. And we underestimate it because when yeah. we talk about when we talk about the the Titanic and what yeah. happened with the Titanic, yeah. they underestimated the size of the iceberg. Yeah, and that and that's you know? exactly. So we underestimate our potential. That and that, oh, and, yeah. that and we completely underestimate that we automatically buy into the set of programs that have already been there. That I I can't you can't do it. Just so, so in terms of you know going back to like practical kind of ways of people being able to start, I mean, there's lots of things out there. Oh, yeah. I think you know, I think one of the key things that I realise, even if you don't really believe it, act it. So yeah. if there's something you want to do, yeah. if there's something you want to be, if there's some behaviour you want to do, positive, positive. Yeah. Let's say on a positive behaviour you want to display, even if you don't consciously believe it mm. through acting it mm. you reprogram yourself yeah. yeah so if you don't really believe that you can get up in the morning mm. early go for a walk if you in your brain you think there's no way that's possible and i've had the experience because i'm not a morning person mm. So I just can't say I'm not a morning person. Yeah. But the more you tell yourself so, you're not a morning exactly. person, more, you stay a you're, morning person. And that's what I, that's what happened. And then what I decided was that I want to be a person of absolute freedom to do whatever I want mm. when I want to do it. So I, I decided that I'm going to challenge myself to get up early in the morning. And I did. And I was getting up at um, 5.55 a.m. Mm. And... Um, Sometimes it would be, you know, six o'clock or five past six. Mm. But, the, you know, before I would never think I could do that on a regular basis. Mm. I can't remember how long I did it for. I did, think, I did it for weeks. But that was a great challenge for me because it's that thing of, I was reprogramming myself. Yeah. That if I want to, at any point in time, get up early in the morning on a regular basis, I can do it. Huh? And I, you know, and, and I, it's only now that I realise I'm reprogramming my subconscious mind, yeah. which we kept to reconfirm by my conscious mind that I not an early person. Yeah. I am a late night person. That's why I am. Yeah. I function better at late. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 and, and, I, and then I realise that's a total limitation of myself. And I think that, and that's we, we have to we have to understand we have to understand that that you know we. It's, it's the actions, it's, the, it's our actions that change the pathway in our brain. And that's what, that's what we know. So, so we can say it and we can act it, but the change comes in the brain. So, so it becomes hardwired into you. So, you. so it becomes easier to you to, for you to call on it because it's now hardwired into, 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 into your brain now. So it's, it's part of your behavior. So it's reprogramming your subconscious. Mm. So, so you know we're here at the space and um we're going to start concluding this now and um what i wanted to just to bring in is that one um concept that from jerry roberts um boot camp that i went to um a concept that he used to help people to kind of realize how much control we have over our our our, our, sub, our, our conscious mind that what we are we're our conscious mind and um our, our subconscious mind what the dynamics between the two so what he was saying mm-hmm. um how he described it is the, the captain and the crew yeah. okay. that's good. That's good. so the captain is the person you know you know he, he's, he's the head, he's he's the head. Yeah. and um the crew they do yeah. the jobs yeah. don't they so he looked he he described it as you know like the, the, you know the sub the, we we the conscious we have we decide we are, are we mm. decide on how things go mm. so with all these subconscious things what have been put in we can direct them mm. and he's saying you know the the um the crew mm. all we need to remember the crew i can only say yes yeah it can never say no because the captain's in the command so where we want to change things we take command of our crew mm. And your crew can only say yes. Mm. They have to do the commands. So where things come unbalanced is mm. when we don't tell the crew what to do. 
So if life is not going how you want it, we're not achieving the things you want to do. Sure, yeah. What is the dynamics between you and the captain and the crew? Mm. So what is the dynamics between your conscious and your subconscious? Well, is there a disparity or are you working together? Well, if, 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 the, if the subconscious, and the, they, they, are, they are not, they're kind of, there's, a, there's, a, there's a disconnect. There is a disconnect, right? Okay. Well, it can be a disconnect. It can be a disconnect, yeah. right? In relate in relation to the conscious and the subconscious, you say some one thing and be doing something complete, and your subconscious will be telling, make, nudging you to do something completely different, because that's what's locked into your into your way of being. So you so you behave in that way. So you could say all you like up there, but you're acting this way. But if, as you described, if you decide. And you and you act on the decisions. You make the actions right simultaneously. That that that's pulling the sub, making the conscious and the subconscious work together. That act that action. So you're you're pulling to the positive side of the subconscious element to get the subconscious to work for you, to work to achieve what it is you want it to want to achieve. But I think that's the point, isn't it? Is yeah. that understanding that. The subconscious, they work. It works for you. you. It works Not for you. It work. You work for it. it. No, it so works for you. Those behaviors, whatever, shouldn't be. T- you know, not say shouldn't be. Yeah. If they are dictating your life, you need to be looking you, at that. You need to look at those. They should be the opposite way yeah. around. Yeah, because you are. You remember, you are the captain of the ship. And and I think what happens with your with that with that behavior stuff is that actually the sh- the crew start to run the ship. Like a mutiny. Uh, yeah, so, and it's a mutiny. So uh, yeah. It, Effectively, you're hijacked. You're effectively hijacked. And so the captain is, and unless the captain makes a decision, then you'll be all at sea and you'll find your life all at sea all the time. All the time. Yeah. Lost and confused. Lost, absolutely, days. yeah. Absolutely. So, on that note, we're going to call it a, a day. Thank you. Today. Thank you. I'm sure right. we're going to have enough a day. We're going to go on this topic for ages. Uh, yeah. So, thank you for joining us once again. Um, we're at the space. And, uh, yeah, I wish you all a, a lovely, happy Christmas, holiday seasons, or whatever you choose to do over this period of time. And um, I would like you to be wise, be confident and different, uh, have a joyful uh, lead into 2017, and I'm sure you're going to see both of us again. And Trevor, would you like to say anything? Well, just be happy. Stay happy. Stay healthy.